Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we are working towards building longitudinal perturbed equations of motion okay. and in that we have seen that we only consider motion along x or f x minus m g theta cos theta 1 equal to m u dot was one equation and there was f z minus m g theta sin theta 1 is equal to m w dot minus q u 1 and m is equal to i y y q dot. Sometime I may be using f a x as long as they are cap they are small letters f x f z and small m we all understand these are perturbed aerodynamic force along x direction body x direction f z along body z direction and m is about body y axis but we are also clear that we are using stability axis system right as the body fixed axis system which is design in such a way the orientation of x is towards the velocity vector in the vertical plane right. We are talking about only longitudinal perturbed equations of motion. Perturbed equations of motion. Why we are doing all this thing? Why are taking so much of pain? Because we know that this u, which is u dot here, q, then w, which is w dot here, q dot here, these are all perturbed quantities. So, we will be tracking those perturbed quantities to comment on whether the aircraft is dynamically stable or not, right. That is our purpose. To solve these equations, I need to know what is the dependence of perturbed aerodynamic forces f x f z and moment on motion variables their rates or control variables. So, for that what we did we started writing f x the function of uh, without f x we have assumed that is function of uh, let us say u by u 1 alpha and delta e that means, we have neglected the contribution of alpha dot and q on f x right. So, what is the message here is we have neglected the contribution of alpha dot and q on perturbed aerodynamic force f x right. This should be very very clear. Now, from there what we did we say we can, now we can write it like this d alpha into alpha plus d f x a by d delta e into delta e. Also my apology sometime I may be using f a x instead of f x a. So, both are same thing. So, you have to be patient with me on sometime I will be using notations which I often forget. Okay. But as long as you understand what is the meaning of d f x a by d u by u 1 this is the partial derivative the how much the force along x is changing per unit change in u by u 1 similarly for alpha and delta i. And we have also found out d f x a 
by du by u1 and the expression was minus q1 s 2 cd1 plus cdu. Similarly, and of course, at steady state, because at steady state, I am using the term 1 here, right. And what is the steady state for our case? It is the cruise, right. Similarly, dfxa by d alpha, we found it to be q 1 s minus c d alpha plus c l 1. Similarly, d f x a by d delta e was found to be minus q 1 s c d delta e. c d alpha you know what is? When I say c d, that is a drag puller I represent c d naught plus k c l square. So, I can easily find out d c d by d alpha for small angle, but we will assume that c d naught does not depend upon alpha and I can take a derivative and we have shown what will be the approximate expression for c d alpha and also you know what is c l 1, c l 1 is the c l to maintain cruise level cruise at a given altitude and given altitude and given speed at steady state is the q 1 that is q 1 is at cruise what is the dynamic pressure dynamic pressure. Once I know this, it is so straightforward for us, what I have to do? We will take the first equation f x and see how we can further simplify it in a manner where we can use it, use our normal understanding of Laplace transform etcetera and etcetera. So, if I substitute these things there, then I can write, let me complete this, I can write for f x, if I have to write d f x a by d u by u 1 into u by u 1 plus d f x a by d alpha into alpha plus d f x a by d delta e into delta e that is for f x then I write minus m g theta cos theta 1. What was theta 1? Theta 1 is the attitude of the airplane at cruise. Okay. It is not the flight path angle. Okay. Please understand. So, this is equal to m u dot. Right. And now, if I substitute the expression of d f x a by d u by u 1 and d f x a by d alpha and d f x a by d delta e whatever expression I have given you then I can straight forward write u dot equal to minus g theta cos theta 1 plus x u into u plus x alpha into alpha plus x delta e into delta e. Please be reminded that we have assumed that uh, no thrust modeling, okay, which can be easily done in the ma manner which we are doing for drag. Okay. And what is what will be the expression of x u? X u will be you can yourself do it once you substitute those expression and once I write it, you will understand that x u is nothing but minus q 1 s c d u plus 2 c d 1 divided by m u 1. You could see that we substitute for d f x a by d u 1 this q minus q 1 s by c d u plus 2 c d 1 and then when I write u dot, so that u 1 is absorbed here. So, simply you can find out this. Once you know x u, you also know similarly x alpha will be equal to minus q 1 s c d alpha minus c l 1 divided by m u 1. 
and x delta e will be equal to minus q 1 s c d delta e by m is all. Okay. What is C D delta E? Do not get lost into this expression, these are mechanical, okay. it does not require rocket science to derive these expressions. I have explained enough, but you should not lose the insight. What is C D delta E? C D delta E is see this is the airplane tail let us say okay. and this is the elevator. If I am flying a machine, I will always prefer to Suppose this is my CL design. So, I will always prefer a configuration of wing, their location, tail location, the tail moment arm, all in such a way that CM versus CL should follow trends such that here DCM by DCL is negative, restricted by the amount of static margin you are going to design that you already know. Also, I will prefer the airplane should automatically get this configuration at delta E equal to 0. That is, for example, your main mission is to cruise, then I should be able to get a trim CL design where I need not put any delta E. Why? Because the moment I put delta E, this C D delta E tells me that there will be increase in drag increasing drag because you are trimming it right so a good designer will ensure that this trim drag this three delta which which attributes a trim drag should be carefully handled best way to do it is that for the most of the operation which you want to fly the airplane make sure it is trimmable with delta e equal to 0 or very very low right so that is why three delta e is also an important parameter. And then another important thing you should understand the C D delta E or C D and C L, then you will find C L alpha, you will find C M alpha will be coming, etcetera. These are non dimensional derivatives, they do not have any dimension. But if you see all this x u, x alpha, x delta e, they all have dimensions. For example, the dimension of x u, you will find it is second inverse, dimension of x alpha, you will find fit second by 2, forgive me I am using fit here. Similarly, x delta e, you will find it is having a dimension. So, this x u x alpha, x delta e, they are termed as dimensional, dimensional stability derivatives. You will soon realize these dimensional derivatives x u, x alpha, x delta e, similar like m u, m alpha, m delta e, z u, z alpha, z delta e, all will play important role in deciding the dynamic stability of the airplane. So, these are termed as dimensional stability derivatives. Okay. So, this is the example of how to simplify the equation in a convenient form for our further analysis. I have demonstrated it for first equation f x, which is u dot equal to this, this, this plus x delta e into delta e. Similarly, or similar exercise I will do for f z, then I can show that once I try to pick f z minus m g theta cos theta 1, oh no, this is not cos g theta sin theta 1 is equal to m w dot minus q u 1. If I pick the second equation and I know again f z will be function of 
q by u1 alpha b alpha dot q c by 2 u1 and delta e then i can write fz as df z a by d u by u1 into u by u1 plus d f z a by d alpha into alpha plus d f z a by d alpha alpha dot we will non dimensionalize this so you say d alpha dot c by 2 u1 into alpha dot c by 2 u1 plus d f z a d q c by 2 u1 into q c by 2 u1 plus d f z a plus d delta e into delta e. Okay. So, what is the next step? We have already learnt when we handle the f x equation, we have to substitute the expression derived for this, this, this and this at steady state already those expression you have identified and derived we substitute those here and then put it here and complete this equation and once you do that you will get w dot minus u 1 q is equal to minus g theta sin theta 1 plus z u into u plus z alpha into alpha plus z alpha dot into alpha dot plus z q into q plus z delta e into delta e. Okay. And what will be the expression for z u minus q 1 s C L U plus two C L one divided by M U one, then Z alpha will be equal to minus Q one S C L alpha plus C D one divided by m u 1 z alpha dot will be given as minus q 1 s c l alpha dot c bar by 2 m u 1 and z q will be equal to minus q 1 s C L Q C bar by 2 M U 1. Please understand that we have already derived the expression for C L alpha dot C L Q. So, these things are just algebraic manipulation. What we have done? We have expanded F Z, substituted those expressions, then divided by M U 1 and we got this equation. This is what we are looking for. So, this is my second equation and also please understand that as x u x alpha x delta e is z u z alpha z alpha dot z q z delta e they are all dimensional stability derivatives. Okay? You can check their dimension they have a finite dimension. Similarly, for m if I come for m, we will get equation of the form for m we will write, you know that m equal to i y y q dot. So, I can write q dot equal to m divided by i y y and again for m I will write d m by d u by u 1 into u by u 1 plus d m by d alpha into alpha plus d m by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1 into alpha dot c by 2 u 1 plus d m 
by d q c by 2 u 1 into q c by 2 u 1 plus d m by d delta e into delta e. Of course, by now you are expert that these derivatives partial derivatives to be evaluated at steady state and we have all done this we know this expression and if I again substitute it here for m for m I put this I divide by i by y. So, I will get equation of the form q dot equal to m u into u plus m alpha into alpha plus m alpha dot into alpha dot plus m q into q plus m delta e into delta e. And you could check yourself the expression for m u will be if I write it here so expression of m u would be given as q 1 s c bar c m u plus 2 c m 1 by i y y u 1 then m alpha would be equal to q 1 s c bar c m alpha by i y y then comes what m alpha dot m alpha dot would be equal to q 1 s c square c m alpha dot by 2 i y y u 1 m q will be given as q 1 s c square c m q by 2 i y y u 1 and then m delta e will be equal to q 1 s c bar c m delta e by i y y. Okay. Now, let us see here try to understand this dimensional stability derivatives. If I pick m alpha you could see it has c m alpha. What was c m alpha? c m alpha was d c m by d alpha and we have realized that c m alpha has to be negative for ensuring static stability of the airplane. And what is the dimension of c m alpha? It is a dimensionless right. So, these are dimensionless parameters derivatives. Okay. However, what, ha what happens to m alpha you could see it is no more dimensionless it has a dimension. Okay. To be more precise if you want to know the dimension this will be you can check yourself of this dimension. So, what again you could see this m alpha m alpha dot m q m u all are dimensional stability derivatives. This was non dimensional stability derivatives because they attribute to stability. Okay. So, this should be very clear in your mind before we do some jugglery here and there our life needs some rest because so much of expressions we are deriving and we need to know what you are going to do with all this. The big question will come whether this approach is helping us or not. 